Hare Krishna Sankar. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is my uh, main, the first lecture after lunch. There is about the uh, topic is uh, bolts and nuts. My, uh, I am going to talk about uh, elderly lady, but the other two uh, speakers are going to uh, uh, deal with a much uh, younger person. Uh, This is about uh, uh, how to uh, deal with a patient who is 60 years old with a fragility fracture. As you all know, osteoporosis uh, is increasing in number due to the increasing age of the population. Even in India, our uh, age uh, you know, expectancy is going up and we have a lot of aging population. And they all have uh, you know, weak bones as we grow older our bones become weak. So that is a higher risk of developing uh, fractures. Hip fracture is one of the important causes uh, for uh, morbidity, mortality and uh, financial burden. Uh, and previously, older people, if they fall, they say that uh, they will die. Usually they won't treat the hip fracture and the patient dies. But nowadays, there are orthopedic people who uh, do a good job, they fix the uh, uh, bone and the patient mobilizes uh, quickly. Even then, the financial burden uh, in our population is very high. So we have to uh, deal with uh, the fragility, fragility of the bone in elderly people. Uh, I'll just want to go through a, a short history about a patient, 65 year old lady, uh, who had presented with uh, a different problem, cough for a few times for a few days. And she was arranged to have a chest x-ray which showed clear lung feeds but collapse of uh, lower dorsal and upper lumbar spine. She was referred for further management. So what to do for this patient? We, uh, we have to deal with uh, the investigation and how to manage this patient is going to be my uh, uh, you know, uh, talk today. As you could see, there is uh, uh, there is a fracture in the uh, dorsal, lower dorsal uh, spine uh, for this uh, patient. So what is a fragility fracture? Any fracture which is occurred due to a uh, fall from a uh, small height, that is a standing height or less, uh, which causes a fracture is a fragility fracture. Usually we, our bones are <coughs> able to withstand those type of minor injury. But if there is uh, an injury, minor injury, and we attain a fracture, then the bones are weak. It means the bones are weak and needs to be uh, uh, addressed. Why does it occur? It is because of osteoporosis, which is characterized by low bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration, which causes weak bones and uh, make it easy for fracture. As you can see in this picture, the first bone is a uh, normal bone uh, with a normal uh, mineralization and it's strong. The other, the one on the right is a weaker bone because of osteoporosis. The mineralization is defective and it is easily breakable. It is widespread and uh, only 77, only 9% of patients with osteoporosis are treated. About 75% of people with osteoporosis are not uh, uh, diagnosed at all. 14% diagnosed but not uh, uh, treated uh, at all. WHO criteria for diagnosis of osteoporosis through a DEXA scan is that any T-score of minus 2.5 or less is osteoporosis. But if it is combined with uh, any osteoporotic fracture, then it is severe osteoporosis. If it is between minus 1 and minus 2.5, it is osteopenia. Still, osteopenia is also very important because uh, the actress patient, they have a fall, even with the osteopenia, they can develop fracture and uh, have deformity because of that. The clinical presentation, it's a silent uh, thief. It, uh, usually there is no uh, clinical uh, signs or uh, symptoms. Uh, sometimes patient might have uh, low back pain, but otherwise usually they present with either uh, a vertebral or a hip fracture, uh, which is with, with a minor trauma. Uh, and in all the, it doesn't mean that all the patients with uh, pain have osteoporosis or 
if, if a person doesn't have any fracture, it doesn't mean that the patient is not having osteoporosis. So this needs a uh, proper, you know, uh, screening and uh, management, further management. The risk factors of, uh, you know, alcohol and smoking are not uh, prevalent in our uh, population, at least in our elderly female population. But the other, there are other risk factors like uh, uh, excess glucocorticoid use. Glucocort it is not only glucocorticoid use. You, you know, many patients, uh, as you can come across, uh, come with a, a steroid abuse. Uh, either it might be a, uh, they might get medication that steroids from over the counter or from uh, a prescribed uh, medication from uh, alternative treatment. So we have to go through the history about the medication. Apart from glucocorticoid, there are other medications as well which can cause uh, uh, osteoporosis. For example, the newer agent SGLT2 inhibitor causes uh, calcium leak and osteoporosis and EC uh, that uh, CANA uh, study has shown, shown that CANA study has shown that there is an increased risk of fracture in patients who are using canagliflozin. And uh, there are other medications like pyoglitazone and uh, uh, can breast cancer treatment medications and uh, prostate cancer medications all can cause easy, easy fracture. Low calcium, estrogen and sedentary lifestyle are all very common in our uh, population which uh, leads to an uh, increased risk of osteoporosis. We have to go into the pathophysiology to understand why this occurs. Uh, these are some of the uh, causes for, uh, mm, for uh, you know, development of uh, osteoporosis. Uh, the peak, peak bone mass is very important. We have peak bone mass only at the age of uh, uh, 20 to uh, 30. So mid 20 is where we, we have a lot of uh, uh, bone in our, uh, in our body. Not, not of, bone would be st uh, strong during that period and the mineralization is maximum during that period. Genetic factors, uh, calcium intake, uh, physical activity, uh, smoking and alcohol all plays an important role for this development of uh, uh, you know, bone mass at the age of uh, 20. Estrogen which increases osteocyte uh, uh, survival and osteoblast survival increase, uh, decreases uh, bone resorption. These, uh, the hormone also inhibits osteoclast, which uh, uh, decreases the bone uh, resorption uh, in the body. If, uh, if there is remodeling, the causes of uh, imbalance are due to, uh, uh, you know, excess glucocorticoid, low estrogen, hypothyroidism, uh, and increased PTH, apart from the other factors. Uh, adequate, see, adequate uh, vitamin D status, normal calcium level, uh, normal sex hormone uh, levels and PTH all prevent increased uh, uh, resorption and osteoporosis in people. So age related, again coming to uh, the age related bone loss, the calcium absorption will be less and the vitamin D level combined, uh, combined with uh, low estrogen level causes increase in bone turnover and resorption causing bone loss. Falls is an important uh, factor, even if they have uh, uh, osteoporosis. Falls are important uh, because that is the one which causes injury. All, not all the falls causes uh, uh, fracture, it's about only 5 to 6% uh, of falls are associated with fractures. And elderly people have uh, other problems as well, musculoskeletal problems as well, like proximal myopathy, gait dif difficulty, uh, visual impairment, and moreover sedation. Sedation at night causes uh, uh, people to tumble and fall at night. Sarcopenia, that is muscle mass as well, goes down uh, uh, at an uh, older age, and this causes uh, uh, instability and uh, increase in rate of hip hip fractures at this uh, point. How to evaluate this patient? So lab and basic investigations are very important. We have to look at the calcium, phosphorus and alkaline phosphate burn turnover uh, medication uh, tests. And uh, the calcium phosphorus, phosphorus is very important. That has to be corrected or looked into why they have uh, a low or high level. Uh, the phosphate, if it is low, we have to think about various other causes which can also cause osteomalacia and weak bones. 
25 megaoxy vitamin D is very uh, I mean, com commonly low in our population. Uh, PTH, uh, high PTH, uh, and uh, creatinine. Uh, renal failure also leads to osteoporosis. Apart from that, if you suspect that it, there could be other reasons for development of uh, osteoporosis, we have to have a set of other investigations like thyroid function tests, uh, have to look at the uh, rheumatoid factor, uh, 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 serum cortisol level, serum electrophoresis to uh, rule out uh, myeloma, and uh, we have to look at the uh, biochemical markers of bone turnover as well uh, if, we, if we need to, to rule out. Uh, uh, it is not routinely needed, but if there is a high risk, you have to do those things as well. Imaging is gold standard, densitometry, PMD is a gold standard for this. We have to, uh, you know, screen for most of the patients with the uh, elderly, which I will go through the guideline uh, in a minute. There are other methods as well where we can uh, look at the uh, bone mineral density in patients. So DEXA scan provides accurate and reproducible values of bone mineral content in the, and density. And its uh, radiation exposure and scanning time is also a minimal. T score is uh, the standard deviation from a uh, young adult, and the Z score is uh, the standard deviation values of uh, same age, sex, and body size. This is uh, important. Z score is we, we look at the T score usually, but Z score is important when there is uh, uh, secondary causes of uh, osteoporosis. So the 10-year uh, fracture ri ri risk uh, according to T-score is when the T-score goes down and when the age goes up, that is an increased uh, risk of uh, fracture in these patients. And so we have to, what the guideline says is, National uh, Osteoporosis Foundation says that all women over the age of 65 has to have a, uh, a BMD uh, done, uh, men over the age of 70, and younger post-menopausal post, uh, women and men of uh, 50 to 60 with the clinical risk of uh, uh, osteoporosis have to undergo uh, the screening. Apart from that, uh, uh, perimenopausal women with high risk uh, and adults with a condition or medication uh, which will cause low bone mass also have to have uh, uh, BMD test uh, done. Uh, uh, quantitative computer tomography, the CT will use a uh, uh, how strong the trabecular bone is uh, in the presence of osteoarthritis can also be used uh, uh, if PMD uh, is not uh, is will not give a good value in uh, uh, selected patients selective patients. FRAX is a, a fracture uh, risk assessment, uh, which is a Sheffield-based uh, online uh, uh, risk assessment tool, which can be used. Uh, uh, there is a, a, you have to pay a, a charge for downloading it, but uh, it can be used uh, uh, online as well, uh, which incorporates uh, the few factors which will give a individual's 10-year risk of osteoporotic fracture. And designed to, uh, I mean, this is to, this is to, uh, designed to uh, decide who and when to treat a patient. So this is how it will uh, look at when you download it. And if the therapy is indicated, if the 10-year risk of hip fracture is more than 3%, or other major uh, fracture risk is about uh, more than 20%. So this does not apply for postmenopausal women and uh, men less than 50 years of age. Uh, coming to the treatment uh, part, the lifestyle modification is the first thing. You know, exercise. Uh, uh, you know, you have to avoid uh, smoking and moderation, which is not prevalent in our uh, population, as I mentioned to you. Exercise is very important. Exercise increases uh, the bone mineral density in uh, uh, by about uh, uh, one percentage. Aerobic weight bearing and resistant exercises also maintains a balance for these uh, patients. Fall prevention is very important. At risk patient has to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, fall prevention uh, techniques and methods at home as well to prevent osteoporosis complications. Uh, hip protectors also have been uh, found to reduce uh, uh, hip fractures. So nutrition, calcium, there was extensive discussion about uh, calcium replacement in uh, uh, elderly postmenopausal women yesterday uh, by uh, Dr. M.S. Shishadri, who has also uh, shown that it is beneficial to uh, uh, replace calcium in elderly patient, which increases bone mineral density by 1%. 
and uh, reduces the risk of uh, hip and uh, uh, vertebral fractures. Vitamin D replacement, we are a population where uh, uh, vitamin D deficiency is very prevalent. Uh, about 800 to 1000 international unit replacement is required every day to prevent uh, you know, uh, hip fractures and non vertebral fractures as well. So we have to be aware of uh, overdose of vitamin D. You know, so vitamin D is a, a fat soluble vitamin which can cause toxicity. I, we have few patients who were overdosed with uh, uh, you know, vitamin D which uh, caused uh, uh, hypercalcemia and renal uh, impairment patients. So we have to uh, look, stick to the guidelines, give vitamin D according to the uh, you know, patient's need. Uh, coming to the medication, anti-resorptive and uh, anabolic uh, uh, therapies are available. Bisphosphonates are the first line of treatment, especially oral alendronate is the first line treatment. And then if the patient is not uh, able to tolerate uh, uh, oral uh, alendronate because of uh, gastritis, you can have uh, uh, IV zolendronic acid. And also the compliance is good with uh, uh, IV zolendronic acid which can be given once uh, yearly. And the other things are uh, SCRM, uh, that is raloxifen, estrogen, uh, progesterone combination, uh, denosumab, uh, which is a, a rankle uh, a monoclonal antibody, calcitonin, these are all the anti-resorptive um, uh, agents available. And teriparatide is a, a PTH which is uh, uh, available as uh, anabolic uh, therapy. Bisphosphonates are a group uh, which mimics uh, pyrophosphate which is taken up uh, uh, by the bone uh, through the, as it sticks to the calcium and it prevents uh, resorption of, uh, uh, of the bone by inhibiting the osteoclast. And also it's, uh, uh, it may modulate the inhibitory signals from osteoblasts as well. Uh, it uh, reduces the uh, uh, you know, lifespan of uh, osteoclast and these are the, the methods by which uh, uh, bisphosphonates reduces the uh, you know, bone resorption in uh, body. Mm, uh, the Horizon trial which uh, looked into uh, zolendronic acid versus uh, placebo and reducing new fractures and mortality after uh, hip fracture was uh, a large study with involving uh, uh, two, more than 2,000 men and women in 148 uh, uh, clinical centers were found to uh, was given uh, zolendronic acid 5 mg with uh, vitamin D and calcium and they were looked at at 6, 12, and 24, and 36 months, and they found that uh, reduced uh, subsequent fracture risk over time of all fractures, any fracture, but the hip fracture risk was not, uh, you know, was not uh, significant. Uh, the, the placebo and the you know, zolendronic acid patients had uh, uh, equal, more or less equal uh, hip fracture, but uh, it reduced other risk, other risk factors and increased uh, uh, BMD and reduced uh, uh, the death in uh, patients as well. The uncommon complication of this fascinate is osteonecrosis of jaw and uh, atypical uh, fractures. This are, these are some of the risks. IV zolendronic acid can cause severe asthenia in some of the patients. Uh, and uh, PTH is an anabolic treatment, anabolic agent which uh, increases uh, bone mineral density in uh, both uh, postmenopausal and male uh, uh, osteoporosis patient. It is given as subcutaneous injection, only approved for about uh, two years duration. Uh, the fracture prevention trial, uh, when they used 20 microgram of uh, teriparatide per day, reduced uh, the vertebral and non-vertebral risk by about 65% uh, and 53% respectively. The contraindications are you have to look at the PTH level uh, definitely for this patient. If they have a high PTH, you should not be using uh, uh, teriparatide. The other uh, contraindication is if the patient is having prior therapy with uh, um, uh, radiation therapy for the bone, Paget's disease, uh, hypercalcemia, and uh, bone meds are all contraindication for teriparatide therapy. Concurrent uh, uh, therapy, teriparatide and uh, alendronate, uh, uh, can they be combined together? There was a small OCT involving 83 uh, patients uh, who had uh, you know, found that uh, spine and femoral neck uh, BMD increased uh, greatest with PTH only group. 
so when they when they were combined with thalidomide, there was impaired uh, uh, PTH um, uh, anabolic activity. Uh, so recommended that by bisphosphonates are continued after the PTH uh, therapy. So simultaneous use of bisphosphonate with other agents are not uh, indicated. Denisobap is a costly uh, medication, it's a monoclonal antibody uh, against uh, Arankal, incubus osteoclast and uh, the freedom trial showed that uh, it is better than alendronate in improving the uh, osteoporosis and fracture in uh, uh, patients. It also increases the PMP in these patients. Uh, another few minutes please, two minutes. Uh, BMD again is a reverse. So there was a paper recently which showed that the BMD gain, BMD gain is reversed when the uh, denosumab was stopped. So when you start on this medication, actually you have to uh, uh, counsel about long term. It is a costly uh, affair. It is given 60 milligrams uh, uh, twice uh, a year. So calcitonin is another agent which is available as a nasal spray and uh, the risk of uh, you know, fracture were less in five years were uh, reduced by 33%. Uh, but this has not been used and it's been banned in other countries more, uh, because of the risk of uh, uh, cancer. Uh, uh, other than that, it can cause nasal irritation, nausea and local inflammation and flushing. Estrogen and HRT are not recommended now and it's usually uh, used for postmenopausal symptoms alone and increased risk of, uh, because they have an increased risk of uh, cardiovascular events, venous uh, thromboembolism and breast uh, CA. So for these reasons it is used only for uh, postmenopausal symptoms for shorter duration. Evaluating the patient, the BMD has to be repeated one to two years, uh, uh, every one to two years uh, while on therapy. Uh, you have to step up therapy if the patient had not attained desired, desired BMD over a period of time. So you have to ensure the compliance and uh, we have to reevaluate for secondary causes if uh, no improvement. Uh, biochemical uh, markers for bone turnover, especially bone specific alkaline phosphatase and other age, uh, chemicals were also available which can be done which is not routinely uh, uh, done in patients with osteoporosis. About stopping uh, therapy, there is no real guidelines but uh, discontinuation usually done over five, after five years. There is uh, the risk of uh, you know, reduced PMD after discontinuing alendronate after five years but uh, there is no risk, increased risk of fracture in, for about five years period after stopping alendronate and patients uh, uh, with a very high risk of fracture, we can continue our therapy. So uh, the myth is I'm, I'm too young to worry about osteoporosis, not true, uh, osteoporosis can occur at any age, starting early is very important, regular weight bearing exercise, avoiding smoking and alcohol uh, prevents uh, osteoporosis and uh, I would like to end with the uh, uh, summary that osteoporosis is common, we have to screen in uh, you know, eligible patients. Uh, to prevent uh, you know, uh, complications of osteoporosis that is fracture in these patients uh, which would be uh, beneficial in the long run uh, physical, uh, psychological and uh, economic consequences for the patient. Stay active, stay fit and uh, you will prevent uh, osteoporosis. Thank you.